Hey guys, it's Tab from Freefly. I'm here with Movi Pro and a variety of Mimics, game pads, focus devices. Just, uh, I've seen a couple previews from the engineering team in the last couple days that got me super, super excited. So I wanted to just spend a few minutes and show uh, where we're gonna go with Movi Pro ecosystem in the future. Um, so the first thing I wanna show is fizz control via Mimic. So you'll notice we've got the antenna removed on this just so we don't swamp. Um, all, um, this control button, you can see I actually have gestural control of Iris. And you know, we, we kind of had this idea a long time ago, but we weren't here with me. So you can see I click that button, and I can actually roll the Iris left and right to control, you know, more, more closed up, more open. Um, and same thing with focus. So I can actually, if I hold down the control button and go far, it'll focus deep. And then as I come back, I'm focusing closer and closer and closer, which this isn't something we, we had really thought about beforehand, but it's super intuitive, the idea of focusing far and focusing near uh, using gestures. So um, it's kind of still kind of in beta and development phase, and we're figuring out exactly how what the best way to control this will be. But I was uh, very pleased with the first test of it. It feels very precise and very intuitive. So this, this won't be meant to replace traditional uh, focus control systems, but it will. It, it's just meant so when you find yourself in some interesting place and you need to just do an iris ramp with the gear that you have uh, available, you can pop into the screen and pull it off. Um, so you can see. And then it's got, it's got indicators on the actual little mimic screen that show you where you're at. So, and you can do, you can actually rotate it in any way. So if you wanna control iris by rotating this way and this way, you can do it. This way and this way, you can do it. You can do iris this way. And you can actually pan iris too, like if you wanna control by panning. So kind of any direction of motion with the IMU you have the ability to control any of these screen, any of the the things. Focus iris zoom. Do we have any good questions coming in? Where can I get this? You can get it on our web store. Uh, the, this firmware though is not yet released. Um, so this is that's kind of where we're headed near term with the 1.1 firmware release. Um, I'm super excited about gestural control of Fizz. Uh, I was kind of worried that it wasn't going to feel precise or intuitive enough, but I, I feel totally optimistic about it after actually having tested it. Um, the next thing to briefly showcase is GamePad. So on the 1.1 release, there'll be this new addition to the Mimic screen called GamePad, where you can actually, you gotta hit the turn on. You'll actually be able to control uh, the pan and tilt of the Movi, you'll be able to control focus, iris, and zoom, and roll. And so the way that we've approached it is the, you can adjust the pan and tilt speeds with the left D-pad. So I've got them both at 20% for nice smooth moves right now. Um, and then you'll be able to map various functions to these analog inputs, such as, and that happens via these little, uh, the share and options button on the gamepad. So you can see I'm, I'm ramping through. So right now I've got roll, focus, iris going on these analog inputs. Um, I've got zoom on the joystick right now. It's not actually hooked up, but you can see. The idea is, uh, will you grab a movie controller? Um, the idea is we're kind of mimicking the functionality. So you can see it's kind of like a miniature $25 version of a Movi controller. So obviously it doesn't have some of the options and the control fidelity for the different axes that the Movi controller does, but there are some jobs where whether you're hiking or you know going in the back country and you do want to do some remote operator work, but you maybe don't want to take the whole Movi controller or you don't want to, I don't know, there's all kinds of different reasons that might push you to a smaller, lighter, cheaper kit. Maybe you're going on a super risky job and you don't want to have, you know, super expensive gear with you. So. We've just, we've hooked the Mimic to a PlayStation mount here, and then that'll just plug in via USB-C cable to the DS4. And uh, yeah, it's just another another option to control Movi Pro. Um, 
And it, the the PlayStation joysticks actually are surprisingly accurate. These, you know, and the PlayStation's obviously spent hundreds of millions of dollars optimizing the control feel of this thing, and people are people are very uh, very used to it. So you can see another cool thing is uh, roll on the analog inputs. So you can see because I'm commanding a rate, I'm able to do really really smooth and precise roll moves using those uh, those inputs. And I find that's actually a, a really intuitive way to control roll, which is pretty cool. Got a lot of thumbs up on that. Thumbs up? Thanks, guys. How, how tough is this thing? How tough is what thing? The Mimic? I don't know, you could hit it like that. <laughs> hit it like that. Like this one, we could hit a little harder, because I don't want to, this is Dennis's, so I don't want to break his, like, his little gaming device, but. Um, <laughs> Will this work with an Xbox controller? Uh, no, it won't at first. Maybe it will in the future, but I don't know. For right now, it's just going to be DS4. And these things are so cheap that you should just not piss and moan about it and buy one. What's would be the my range advice. Of the new Mimic controller. New Mimic, we're stating a range of like 600 feet. Uh, with good setups, you should get more than that. But we're being very conservative about range estimates so that we don't have people that are unhappy with the range when they get in. RF uh, challenged environments. Will this work with any third party PlayStation controller? Uh, what do you think? Did you ask that question, Dennis? <laughs> I don't know. If they're. If, they're, if, if they have the same platform, it's will tough for Yeah. If they work exactly the same way as the, the authentic PlayStation controller, then I think so. But again, uh, if you uh, have sprung for the Movi Pro, might just be easier to buy an authentic DS4 gamepad. Uh, and then one last thing to talk about. This is just, to, this guy's not functional yet, but this is just a showcase. <clears throat> uh, we just threw this together, a quick prototype, a mock-up to see, we're brainstorming how Mimic might grow in the future and expand its capabilities. So this would be an add-on for somebody who was just, just needed focus. Um, and then, you know, after we built this, we, we all kind of liked the way it feel and felt and we were uh, uh, playing around with other ways that we might use this device and we were thinking you could clone things like this and hand them out on set and distribute control of the various axes on the Movi. Like, you know, say we're on set and I'm going to control focus, I could give one of these to Hugh and he could be in control of Iris and we're standing separately and controlling the same Movi. So, we're definitely moving in a direction of having like a multi-controller network where you can distribute various controls of gimbal axes and fizz axes around as it makes sense for the particular shots that you're doing. Um, and kind of the, the last thing to touch on is where we're headed with uh, the Movi Pro ecosystem. So sometime in Q1, we haven't really set the exact date yet, but we're gonna open up the COM1 and COM2 ports on Movi Pro and potentially Mimic so that third parties can develop accessories to control things like focus, iris, zoom, gimbal pointing. So, you know, we're kind of, we're pretty focused on Movi Pro right now. And even in our spare time, we're coming up with some interesting ways that you could control this setup in the future. So we're really excited to see when we do document and open that up for third party uh, developers to start exploring the different ideas that they'll come up with to control Movi. So that's a pretty exciting, um, prospect and it's a bit of a shift from the way that we've operated in the past it's been a, a slightly more closed off so um, I'm very excited to uh, very excited to see what people come up with then so mm -hmm. question for Jeff. yeah the pro has two com ports on it will it be possible to maybe have a Moby transmitter with mimic to focus and then have a, a tuba radio for a set of class and wheels and have them both talk to the Moby yes it most likely will be possible in the future to hook up a Fatuba and a Mimic. <laughs> what kind of coffee is that? This is an Americano. Delicious. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's up? Uh, Ruby wants to control the drone with it. <clears throat> Who does? Ruby, Ruby Croft. Yeah, you can, can uh, it's a great idea. It's something we've explored a little bit. Uh, I think it, I think what we're learning is there's kind of uh, there's not really much that you can't control with like a mimic type technology. It's, it's super intuitive, to, super intuitive to control 
gimbal pointing, fizz axes, all that stuff. So, yeah. Would be sweet to use the Mimic with thumb focus wheels for a single operator. Mimic with thumb focus wheels. This guy. Yeah. So, we grab a Mimic handlebar. Grab a Mimic handlebar and a little 13 millimeter mount. Perfect. I need the little plug though. I'll show you. Um, we were kind of playing around with that. Great. So the idea with making all this type of stuff modular would be that people can quickly reconfigure. Do you have a 13 millimeter plug? So, you know, somebody just threw out that idea. I'm adding a 13 millimeter plug here to the back of this Mimic. I'm gonna hook this thumb wheel here. I don't have the right tool for it, so I'm just kinda gonna stuff it there for a second. And then if you can imagine, we grab a 2.5 driver puck. So this is just a quickly showcase how you might pull this off. Okay. Right there. So you can imagine mounting Mimic, mounting this little thumb wheel, getting it all lined up in such a way that this guy's loose on the Mimic, so I'm just going to hold it to showcase. But you could imagine very easily coming up with a, a solution where you have nice control of the Mimic and you have thumb control of focus right there. So the idea really is to build the series of building blocks that allow people to take these discrete components and customize them for their preference. So like once, you know, once you have these little thumb wheels or focus wheels, you can kind of put them and clamp them anywhere. And we're trying to build out the hardware and software ecosystem to allow people to do things that maybe we haven't even thought of yet. Um, Cause you know, when you send, send these things out into the world and they get into the hands of people like Larry McConkey and you know, he starts firing up the CNC machine and all hell breaks loose after. So. The thing we've learned is just really focus on modularity and uh, the ability to allow people to customize for their specific use. It's also nice for us because we don't have to make the perfect solution for each individual party. We can make a series of blocks and then allow people to assemble the blocks in a way that makes sense for them. Another question, can you access roll stop with the Epic from the Mimic or only a Mobi controller? Uh, yes, you can access it from the Mimic. Also GameCad. And GamePad. Thanks, Dennis. We're gonna start a series, for these Facebook Lives, we're gonna have various people from the engineering team stroll through the Facebook Lives from time to time and tell me tell me and the users the things that I've been technically inaccurate about. So that should be fun. But you can see in the red control window of the Mimic, you can do start stop there. So record. And then you see the nice red dot on the monitor. Small HD, uh, these small HD monitors are just awesome. We were kind of too cheap in the past to have nice monitors, but we've introduced a few nice monitors into our workflow and they make life much better. So, you wanna show, show the focus one more time for the people that weren't right at the beginning? Absolutely. Will you grab, uh, get Eric to come out with one of his thumbwheel prototypes? You play ping pong with the Mimic. Uh, you could, if that's what you want us to spend our development time on. <laughs> uh, so for those of you who weren't here earlier, what we were demoing is gestural control of things like focus, iris, and zoom. So uh, you can see here, as I'm rolling, I'm actually controlling iris on the Epic, which is pretty awesome. I saw, you know, engineering team kind of grabbed me and gave a preview of this and it just blew my hair back, so I had to share it. And then, uh, so you can control in any axis. You can control by rolling, by tilting, or by panning for focus, iris, or zoom. So he was just showing me in, with focus control, it's pretty intuitive to be able to focus far by pointing forward and focusing close by rolling back. Um, I know we're gonna have a bunch of people that own Preston that are like, blah, 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 blah. You can never do that professionally. But, you know, we're, we're not doing things the professional way, but we tend to create content which people enjoy. Mm -hmm. Oh, here's a, 
here's another idea of like, you know, building out ecosystem. So Eric B's thrown together a prototype for potential uh, focus control on the Moby ring. And then this thing would be able to attach a variety of different places, kind of leverages the quick release uh, ecosystem. So you'd be able to quick release this anywhere and this would this would talk to the Moby Pro via BLE. So I think the hardware framework is there on the Moby Pro to allow us to build out an ecosystem of a lot of interesting ways to control the device. Um, we're just going to have to figure out which ones we want to go after first, which ones third parties are going to develop for. But I think it should be possible, especially with the introduction of our kind of API for people to solve any solution that there's a sufficient demand for. So I think that's it for today. Thanks for watching.